Good evening, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Mahalia Joseph Wharton. This is TTT News. It's time for the headlines. Government to move ahead with the Civil Assets Forfeiture Bill. The opposition intends to challenge it. Toilet paper issue at CTTRC highlights funding problems. And in sport, Haseem McLean is Southern Games match sprint champion. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says government will move ahead to have the civil asset recovery and management and unexplained wealth bill passed and made into law. This as he criticized those who oppose the law, which he says will help deal with not just violent crime, but white-collar crime. The bill seeks to investigate property owners, business persons, and others with accumulated wealth as to the means in which they are acquired. More from Rishi Harinanan. It will give our security agencies and our courts a fighting chance against those who have been enjoying the best of this country while behaving in the worst of ways. The words of Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, as he said, debate on the civil asset recovery and management and unexplained wealth bill will end on Monday and go before a committee of the whole. This means that every member of Parliament will be able to share their thoughts on each of the 75 clauses in the bill before a vote can be taken. Dr. Rowley said this law will help in dealing with violent crime and white-collar crime. What about the criminals who have the ability to generate contracts, to hand those contracts to people and then take a portion back for themselves? Who is going after those people? And that is the problem that we are facing in this country. He said money laundering is a major concern. In 2017, more than $20 billion in suspicious financial activity was reported by the Financial Intelligence Unit. They want us to remain in a situation where you do not have the ability to pursue the wrongdoing that so pervades this country. They want to remain in a situation where a person could be part of a criminal enterprise, rape this country for hundreds of millions of dollars or how much. The conspirators have made their jail in America already. They turn state witness and give their testimony. But people could stay in this country and laugh at this country and laugh at the Americans because we have no ability to get them before the court. He criticized those, he said, who want a status quo to remain so that they can steal money knowing nothing can happen to them. But as we said in this government, we know what you have done. If you left no footprint and you left no fingerprint, more power to you, you could real teeth. But if you leave any footprint or you leave any fingerprint, we will pursue you to the ends of the earth. Rishi Harinanan, TTT News. Meanwhile, the opposition United National Congress is not happy with the bill. Speaking during a media conference at the Office of the Opposition Leader today, Senators Anita Haynes and Wade Mark questioned the legality of the bill. The Attorney General has already stated that when he feels he will not get a special majority, he will tinker with the legislation and make it a simple majority. And that is, again, the total disregard for the rule of law in this country. You cannot look at legislation and then arbitrarily decide that it does not affect our constitutional rights. And I think the Attorney General must know that the courts will decide this and that it probably, it definitely will not hold up. Wade Mark, who leads the opposition in the Senate, says they will challenge the bill. We will challenge them in the courts right up to the Privy Council. And I can tell you as we speak, they brought this law Similar law in Italy and the Constitutional Court struck it down as unconstitutional. In Australia, they brought it to, it was struck down as unconstitutional. You cannot bring legislation on this flimsy basis of suspicions not working in Trinidad and Tobago. It can't fly. According to the Ministry of Communication, there were two and a half years of public consultations on the bill. 
It says the law does not require a special majority because it does not infringe on any of the three-fifths rights. It is a simple majority piece of law and is recognized as due process within the constitutional parameters. The bill also outlines several mechanisms to protect the rights of citizens. These include assets are not automatically forfeited, there is a court process first, and there can be no forfeiture unless the court gives an instruction. And the Attorney General Faris Al Rawi says the Civil Asset Recovery and Management and Unexplained Wealth Bill is for everybody, including politicians. He made the statement as he called on the public to step forward and be advocates for change. This is not about the current office holder, Faris Al Rawi, or the current Prime Minister. These are laws for the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and we subject ourselves to those same laws. So if it is so bad, how come we want it? How come we subject ourselves to it? Meanwhile, A.G. al Rawi says he has no problem explaining how he acquired his assets. He was responding to a call by the opposition leader for him to do this. I'm the one as a member in a cabinet bringing the law to apply to me and my cabinet members. But I want to say to Mrs. Prasad Bissessa, I can explain my wealth properly and completely and I make no shame about being successful. But witness anonymity inside of civil asset forfeiture, the opposition has a problem with that, ladies and gentlemen. The opposition leader is calling for Faris al Rawi to be removed as Attorney General amid what she says is a $100 million rental scandal on Alexander Street, coupled with his gross incompetence at running the legal affairs of the nation. In a statement, Mrs. Kamla Pasad Bissessa said Mr. al Rawi is the personification of greed and selfishness by a few in the society, which is the root cause of poverty and crime. She said the rental deal take food from the tables of the poor, deprives the citizens of adequate health care and hinders the provision of security to the nation. Additionally, she said the opposition is constantly forced to spend hours of parliamentary time correcting the substandard work of the AG and in order to protect the rights of citizens. In some other news, Chairman of the Kuva Tabakit Talparu Regional Corporation, Henry Awang, admits that councillors left a meeting last Wednesday because there was no toilet paper. However, he said it was the straw that broke the camel's back as the corporation is struggling to get funds to do their jobs effectively and efficiently. More from Rishi Harinanan. Something you have to do. At a public meeting in Five Rivers, Aruka, on Saturday night, the Prime Minister chastised the opposition for its spending from 2010 to 2015. He said money wasted then could have been put to use today. How much toilet paper could one million dollars buy? And if we had the millions that were taken by people from their own, from their own party, couldn't we have had enough toilet paper so we could continue the meeting? And now that they've had to go home because they had no toilet paper. In response, the chairman of the Kuva Tabaki Talparo Regional Corporation, Henry Awong, said there was a toilet paper issue, but that's not all. Last week, Wednesday, at our personal committee, where we did the personal matters of the corporation, personal, we were informed by administration that there is no toilet paper in the corporation. The meeting was halted because we found that was, that was the proverbial show that grew the canal back. We have been having severe poverty, even production of material to, to do normal everyday work, like patching potholes, like, like, like maintenance of vehicles. He said in some cases, councillors were threatened with eviction notices because they can't pay their rent. On a monthly basis, the CTTRC is getting money to pay wages and to pay the cost of living allowance. For the year, he said only $140 million was given to do work on roads and carry out other projects. But with 14 electoral districts, that is $10,000 each, which is not enough. And I'm wondering where the local government at all or the party will serve this government. Because those are the things that is needed to carry the everyday function of the corporation. Um, we can't even get that to, 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 to do, you know, we can get the funding to do everyday work. 
In the lead-up to the 2016 local government election, the PNM's campaign promise was local government reform. However, nothing tangible has been seen by the public since. There is expected to be a local government election later on this year. Rishi Harinanan, TTT News. Police are investigating four murders that occurred between Saturday evening and Sunday morning in North Trinidad. In Mova, 27-year-old Kareem Garcia of Thompson Lane was shot and killed. Two other persons were injured in the incident and are warded at hospital. There has been no motive yet for the shooting. In Diego Martin, 38-year-old Peter Carrera and 22-year-old Josan Ragunanan, both of Tomato Trace, were shot and killed at home. The incident took place at around 10.15 p.m on Saturday. There are also reports of another murder occurring in Maraval last evening. Two people were arrested on outstanding warrants and 12.88 kilograms of marijuana with a street value of $180,000 was found and seized by police. This was done during an Operation Strike Back exercise conducted in the Beetham Gardens area today. According to the police, the exercise, which started at 4 a.m., was coordinated by the Crime and Operations Unit as well as other units of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Community activist Pastor Clive Dottin is calling on whoever wins the 2020 general elections to include every group. He says different groups have a role to play for the benefit of Trinidad and Tobago. He was speaking during a meeting of the Congress of the People at the Center of Excellence today. Don't let winning make it exclusive, Brother Louis, because that is what is hurting us all the time. That's why we have, it, 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 it's an issue of, you know, I am Seventh-day Adventist, you are Catholic, so we can't meet together. Or better yet, I am Christian, so I can involve the Hindu brother in an initiative that where all of us recognize the problems are too huge. They are too monumental for any one group to tackle it alone. If you tackle it alone, you are destined to fail. And for the last seven years, it appeared to be a marriage made in heaven. But all good things must end and the Pan Elders Devon Stewart Association has ended despite an unprecedented six successive victories in the medium category. The executive committee of the band made the announcement stating that while all good things must end, it was a difficult but imperative decision. They thanked Stewart for his contribution to the band and wished him well in his future endeavors even as they promised a new arranger by Monday. More to come, stay with us. There's no time like now and no show like ours. Start your day with a smile and view TTT every morning at 6 a.m. as Lisa, Rishi and Carrie keep you in the know with what's trending on social media, the island vibe, and bring you the latest from the worlds of sport, technology, current affairs and much more. Who says informative can be fun? Now, shaping tomorrow today, weekdays at 6 a.m. on TTT, Talk City 91.1 FM and streaming live on Facebook at TTT Live Online. Welcome back to Sport Now. Turning back the clock, that sprinter Hasim McLean, who took the first big title at the 2019 Southern Games down in Separia. Ruskin Mark tells us that the former national sprinter looked like the champion of old when he won the match sprint title over the talented D'Angelo Harris. The popular match sprint event took pride of place on day one of Southern Games 2019 out in Separia. And here in the semis, the talented D'Angelo Harris was up against James Bridges of Antigua Barbuda riding for Team DPS. It was more of a balanced display than a ride for most of the trip. But that's until the man from Rick Taxonics dove on the inside and got a jump on Bridges, never to be caught, despite the best efforts of the Antiguan. Harris threw to meet Hasim McLean in the final... 
In the first ride, McLean decided to take it long and put his nose in front, trusting his speed and power to get him home. Ride one to the former TNT sprinter. In his second ride, Harris resorted to his slowdown tactics until he got the jump on the back stretch and bolted. McLean tried to come around but ran out of real estate, giving Harris the win and occasioned a third and deciding ride. There, it was up for grabs, with the fitter man likely to prevail, but tactics would play a part as well. Once again, Harris slowed things down to shorten the sprint as much as possible, but again, McLean took it long and he tried to catch Harris napping. He did enough as he was able to get to the line first as Harris backed off when he realized he wasn't catching Hasim McLean on this day. And there went the match sprint title for Southern Games 2019. Congrats to Hasim McLean. Earlier, they were part of the elite one and two riders going 500 meters in a mad scramble from start to finish. And as expected, the rush for home saw Karen Bramble. Harris, McLean and Bridges take the top places to advance to the match sprint final four. And there were some other interesting finishes in the various categories as the spectators got their fill. The riders also seemed to enjoy themselves on the fast blue colour track. Possibly the most fun was had by the BMXers who again held everyone's attention in the youth development races which are quite entertaining to watch. Ruskin Mark, TDT Sports. National swimmer Dylan Carter ended his campaign at the Canadian National Swimming Trials in Toronto last night on a winning note. The talented TNT swimmer who is set to graduate from the University of Southern California in May capped a fine outing with victory in the 200 meters freestyle B final. He touched the wall first in a time of 1 minute 47.71 seconds, a national record for the distance. He had earlier set the tone when he won the preliminaries in the morning with a time of 1 minute 47.82 seconds. Carter also clinched B-final victories in both the 100-meter backstroke, 54.09 seconds, and the 100 freestyle in 49.71 seconds as he got his season off to a positive start. He is set to return to his base in California as he prepares for both the Pan Am Games in Peru from July 26th through August 11th as well as the FINA World Aquatic Championships in South Korea from July 12th through the 18th. In some horse racing news now, a master of war took to the favorites tag with a relish and rumped home for a comfortable winner in the core feature out at Santa Rosa Park, giving trainer Hariram Gobin a third victory on the day. And there they go. And all came away to a level beginning. And Whisper Light uh, takes up that early position in the lead. And here comes one for the road now. So it's one for the road. Whisper Light, that's the top two. Master of War will stalk the pace. Race is about three lengths off the lead. And Buffalo Soldier will observe from the tail. As they bound away up the back stretch, and it's a tussle on for the lead. One for the road towards the outside. Ma uh, Whisper Light on the inside. And here comes Master of War, given his cue early by Rojas. And he now inhales the top two and takes the lead. The lead is by three and a half. Buffalo Soldier is now into second. Then comes Whisper Light in, in third. One for the road has nothing to give. Into the home stretch they go. And it's Master of War. Master of War leads by five. Buffalo Soldier looks to be the only danger now. Whisper Light has given up the chase. Then comes one for the road. But it's all. Master of War in front. Buffalo Soldier is going to try to make a race of it, but Rojas is head down and he's handwritten to the wire. He calls for the whip now, but take a look at that hand ride. Master of War gives Trainer Govin his third winner on the afternoon. Buffalo Soldier was second, Whisper Light was third, and one for the road finished fourth. Duke sensation Zion Williamson added another honor to his freshman season as he was named the Naismith Men's Player of the Year on Sunday. Williamson is the eighth Blue Devils played and third freshman, along with Kentucky's Anthony Davis and Texas's Kevin Durant, to receive the award. On Friday, Williamson was named Player of the Year by the Associated Press and U.S. Basketball Writers Association. He has also been recognized as the ACC Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year. The 18-year-old averaged 22.6 points and 8.9 rebounds per game, while ranking second nationally by shooting 68%. He also ranked among the ACC leaders in steals and blocks. Williamson is the shoe-in to become the overall number one pick in the upcoming NBA draft. 
Tiger Roll won a thrilling, thrilling Grand National to become the first horse since Red Rum 45 years ago to win the Aintree race back-to-back. -back. The 4-1 favorite, ridden by Davy Russell, was level with Magic of Light at 66-1, going over the last fence, but pulled Claire to repeat last year's win. Ruby Walsh finished third on Rath Vinden at 8-1, with Walken the Mill at 25-1 fourth. It was the third national success for trainer Gordon Elliott, who as well as last year also won with Silver Birch in two in 2007. However, Willie Mullins trained up for review, suffered a fatal injury after it was brought down at the first, becoming the race's first fatality since 2012. That's it for sport. More to come. Stay with us. At TTT News, our journalists are on the ground seeking the facts and reporting on people, events, and the issues that affect your life. Our job is to deliver the most up-to-date news reports. We have Trinidad and Tobago covered. TTT News reaches further on any smart device. TTT News. Connect. Now for the weather for the period tonight and tomorrow. Tonight mostly clear and cool apart from the small chance of the brisk shower. Tomorrow mostly hot and sunny day will give way to a mostly clear and relatively cool night. There is the small chance of a few brisk light to moderate showery interruptions. Today is World Health Day and the Diabetes Association in collaboration with the Lions Club did their part by hosting a diabetes camp for children living with type 1 diabetes. It's their way of assisting parents of children living with the condition. They were given some meal prep tips and some much needed information on how they can live a good life with the condition. So everybody was free. Lions Club District Chairperson for the Diabetes Awareness and Action, Lisa Atwater, said their main focus on Sunday was nutrition. We feel very proud, Lions and Diabetes Association, to have done, to, to come together to have done this project. As you can see, it was well attended. We have other activities planned for the rest of the day, and we are trying to marry, marry as much as possible educational experience with fun and learning. Parents and children were taught how to make type 1 diabetes friendly meals to consume on a daily basis. Type 1 diabetes or insulin dependent diabetes happens when your immune system destroys cells in your pancreas called beta cells. President of the Diabetes Association, Andrew Danu, said type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition. Essentially, the body attacks the pancreas, the body's immune system attacks the pancreas, the pancreas is destroyed and essentially it can't produce enough insulin. So these children at a very young age, from the age of three, from the age of five, has, have to take insulin injections for the rest of their lives to survive. The Diabetes Association has started a diabetes registry. Mr. Danu said it's their hope that through the registry they will reach out to children who have developed the condition. The estimates of children living with diabetes, type 1 that is, we say we think that there are about 400 children in Trinidad or 400 to 500 children with type 1 diabetes and we're trying to find them. So we're trying to find these children because we need to know what, what schools they go to. And the problem is a lot of teachers in schools don't know how to deal with children with diabetes. He said the camp was just the first of many to come. We're going to have a series of type 1 diabetes camps, but also we're trying to reach out to children living with diabetes. So if you know someone living with type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes, a child, you call the Diabetes Association and then we could, we could work with them because essentially we're trying to put together that information so that we can know how big the problem is and how it is. We Mr. Dano shared the symptoms of type 1 diabetes in children. For type 1 diabetes, it's sudden onset, so the child will be healthy. And then within a few days, you'll see the child starting to get thirstier. You'll see the child starting to wet the bed very often. You'll see the child starting to get very small and lose weight very quickly. And the child is going to be very tired. So if you see those four symptoms in a child suddenly, then you need to go see the doctor because that could be an indication of type 1 diabetes. He said the two groups have launched the Know Your A1C campaign where they will be testing throughout the country. Despite active research, type 1 diabetes has no cure. Treatment focuses on managing blood sugar levels with insulin, diet and lifestyle to prevent complications.
Opposition leader Kamla Prasad Bisesa is proposing the creation of a fund for survivors of domestic violence. She said from 2008 to 2019, 165 women were killed as a result of domestic violence and more has to be done to protect them. Additionally, she quoted statistics from 2017 Inter-American Development Bank report, which showed that one in three women in Trinidad and Tobago have gone through abuse at the hands of a domestic partner. Specially trained unit within the police service to handle cases. You know, this was one of the remits of the committee police unit that Mr. Pandey had set up. Of course, it was disbanded, but that was a special unit too that could have assisted. We must treat all women with respect, we must treat their privacy and confidentiality in a protective way. Mrs. Prasad Bisesa said women are also at greater risk when they leave the abuser. So giving police authority to intervene in removing a perpetrator from a home, we need to have safe houses and intervention centers, safe spaces for victims to go. We must have free legal counseling for women who need it. And changing the future then, these are some quick fixes with the, in the medium term, training and counseling for men, for young boys, for young women, especially those who will live in homes where domestic violence has happened. Mrs. Prasad Bisesa was speaking at an event held by the Spiritual Baptist community on Saturday. The theme for the event was Abuse Me With Love, Domestic Violence Is Wrong. More to come, stay with us. Maximize impact when you advertise on TTT Live Online. With TTT Live Online, your brand can be seen by viewers in TNT and all around the world via our social media pages. And you can bet they're watching. Our audience is growing every day as TTT Live Online boasts a combined half a million followers on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter. Our statistics show the live stream of the Now Morning Show reaches tens of thousands of viewers each day. Our new News and entertainment pieces draw hundreds of thousands of views across all platforms. And now you have an opportunity to be featured alongside this amazing content. Are you ready to maximize impact? Contact our sales team today. Call 622-4141 at extensions 2601 to 2611 or email us at sales at ttt.co.tt. Welcome back. There will be a partial shutdown of the Karani water treatment plant from noon on Monday, which is expected to cause some inconvenience to Wasa customers. Wasa says the shutdown is to carry out emergency maintenance works at the plant as well as on a defective valve at the site of the new Kurab interchange. The disruption in service will impact customers in areas of central and southwest between the hours of 12 noon and 8 p.m., while the supply to areas in north will be restored by 6 a.m. on Tuesday, 9th April 2019. The Jean de la Vallette fast ferry from Malta will come to Trinidad and Tobago. That from Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, despite the controversy surrounding the general manager of Virtue Ferries from Malta, the company the vessel was leased from. Even those who we expel from the PNM, right, for unwanted conduct, they are the go to people. All of them is boat export. But let me put all of them on notice. You can say what you want. The boat is coming here on contract. He also updated the country on the status of two vessels purchased from Australia. And the two that we have ordered in Australia, you have done what you could. The UNC go down to Australia by letter and try to incite the opposition in Australia to prevent the Australian government from helping us to buy those two boats. You could do what you want, we buy, we buy in them. Only last Thursday, cabinet approved the payment. And eventually, two new ferries will appear here because the solution to ferries is to buy two new boats, and that is the policy of this government. You could do what you want. And that's how we end our TTT News Report. On behalf of all of us here, have a good night.